not back. Did you do the thing? Did you turn off your what? airplane mode? Yeah. Oh, okay. Turned it on. Turned it on. Oh, on. On, and then I turned it's the off. It's weird that off. that would help. Okay. We are blurry. Or if it's just this. Try it on that real quick. Hi! Alex, you're a What's real up, one! What's up, Alex? You are a real one! Only three people showed back Whoa. up! Whoa! Jeremy, what's up? Aggressive. Yeah, I think it's just the this, because look, Jared. Was fine for most yeah, of I think it's just this. You know, I wanted to make sure, because the last time, I'm telling you, there was a lot of issues with the last one, so... Just ignore the blurriness, because, I mean, it's clear everywhere else you don't need to watch. I'm okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all good. What's up, me with knives? What's up, Breeze? It's my cuz. It's your cousin. Who else we got? Um, Mark here. We got 13. We had 23 when we left. Um, uh, yeah, where's 10 of you? Yeah, where the hell's the rest of you? Just joking. I'm not. Uh, I have a prototype with that new artisan still coming. Gonna put it through hell. Yeah, you know, um, Mike Emler, he's got it. He's testing it right now. I've heard good things. He's a knife sharpener. Um, I mean, it's a powdered steel. Um, I know they don't want to say what's in it, like the elements, because I think they're trying to patent it, which good for them. I mean, cool. There's so many steels out there. I, I love seeing new steels and stuff. And if they can have a steel in between 14C and D2 that's for a budget price, that's amazing to me. Um, the one that, uh, that, that we have that he's got, because he has the Rhea with it, um, ours has D2. But I... I don't know. I want to get his knife, though, because he's got a little fixed blade that they have prototypes out on right now. Hey! Oh! Thanks, Ammo Wizard! <laughs> I was slapping <laughs> something that wasn't the bell. I got I'm pumped. i a photo of his... Oh, pro that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the proto... Uh, what is it? The sea snake, right? The sea snake. I think that's what it's called. That thing is awesome. It's like it's a little, um, like a little uh, Warncliffe razor. Badass. All right. Ah! Um, what do we got going here? Um, so we are going to do a liner lock versus frame lock knife talk. In the first part, we are going to talk about, so how many people we got here? Only 16. I'm just joking. Thank, thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, 16 people here. Um, maybe we'll give it like two more minutes because some people might be trying to come through and I don't want to be like in the middle of asking you guys these questions. My roommate's nine month old daughter watched some knife videos with me. She's watching this laying on my leg on the sofa. That's, That's awesome. awesome. There's a couple people, um, that have sent us pictures, um, like Bam and Knife Guy. He sent us a, a little clip, a little video of his kids watching us. Remember they were us. to the music? He even did one with, like, with his dog watching and shit. I think that's hilarious. Yeah, that's awesome. I almost get this. This would have been hilarious. I almost asked him to send me a clip of his dog. And I was going to get um, Douglas. And I was going to make a clip of Douglas. Like, like, because he has two corgis. So he's got a male and a female, and I was gonna have Douglas hitting on his uh, his female, like <laughs> watching a clip of her watching us, and put it into one of the episodes. I thought that would have been hilarious, but I didn't wind up getting and doing it. But that would have been funny though. It would have been a lot of like you know like work to do it, but I could have did it. A lot of people are probably watching Blade HQ. Oh, they got a stream going right now. Yeah. Fuck them. They're just gonna be <laughs> advertising Boker the whole time, let's be real. No, I'm just no, they're they're cool. Blade HQ's awesome. I know they, they treat are. us really good. They've they've uh they haven't ever sent us anything. I mean they sent us uh, drawings and stuff. But uh I'm but they're cool saying. though. They don't have to send us anything. I'm not saying that sounded horrible just now. <laughs> they haven't sent us anything. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I'm just saying like that uh Blade HQ's awesome. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> It's not coming off that way. That didn't come at off good all. at all. 19, 18. All right. Um, so, screw it. Let's get this thing going. All right. So, liner lock versus frame lock. Just to catch people up. Wait. Mine showing off the TS-129. Can't. That's my birthday. Okay. So, did he, you just. That's my birthday. Okay. 129. Okay. 
Okay. It's my knife. Which one is it? This one. It's mine. I so, knew it, and I love that so knife. So Simply Blades is the one, the guy I'm sending this knife to to check out. And yeah, it is amazing. I might because I gotta mail some stuff out tomorrow. Lavender pants. I gotta mail some stuff to you. Um, and uh. A couple other people, I got to mail their stuff back. So I might just send it tomorrow. But I wanted to get, before I sent it, I wanted to uh, to get a battle between these two. I think that'd be a good video. Battle to the death. But so I might do that and then get it out to you on Friday or Monday. But I might just wind up sending it tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. Hawaiian Knife Gear, my 129 will be here soon. You will love it. This is a, a really, like the front flipper, phenomenal. The whole... Like, you don't even need the front flipper. Watch your head, baby. Sorry. Because the middle finger flicking action and the thumb action is so good. It's so crisp and smooth. Like, the detent is, is good. You know, it's not like it's going to pop out, but it's just so crisp. And the geometry, this thing's a beast. I mean, like, seriously. I cannot express the geometry, like, how good this thing goes through materials because it's so it's got such a a um a sh like the drop from thickness to thin is so long that man it's it's a razor it's insane how good tucson is doing the blade geometry they're knocking it out of the park what's up baby i don't know what blade shape to do for a sticker okay kara's designing show kara's designing a blade sticker yeah i know turn it though it's not done yet Okay, so she wants to know, because remember, just like this thing right back here, we had a cleaver on this one, right? What blade shape should we put on the new stickers? What do you guys think? I mean, we can still do that. We'll still have the cleaver ones as well, like the original, but I want to make, like, different shapes so that, um... A tanto. Somebody said tanto. Oh, that's, that's pretty Clip good. Clip point. Harpoon. What, what kind of tanto, though? A harpoon. It's not that idea. A, a, an American tanto. I guess it could be a Japanese title. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys watched my video. Sheep's foot. Ooh. Sheep's That's foot. That's what's already on there, basically. No, that is not a sheep's foot. But it's kind of. It's like. Okay, so you're saying just make it a little more pronounced. Um, anything but a tanto. Anything but a tanto. Well, that's, you sound so um, con like convicted on that that I feel like I can't do a tanto now. You guys um, know about the Tuya Envy 2. Well, Dave Warren just made a DW3 in, um, in has, what's it called? It's Micarta, but it's cross-cut Micarta. So if you know Micarta, like this is regular cut. Cross-cut is the sides. So the sides are the face. And he's got two different colors. And so it's this exact same knife, but made into a liner lock with Micarta. Amazing. This knife is, the quality of this thing is insane. Obviously, I haven't tried the liner lock version, but I have both of the DW1 and the DW2. Amazing knives. Amazing knives. And this one, super thin hollow ground blade. And then the front, the top, gets thicker, but it's not like stupid thick like some knives get. So it's like good for light duty prying, um, stuff like that. Depending on, you know, it's, it's a tough knife. A badass knife, but it's not overly big, if you can just see. Like, it's like... 7.3 inches, I think, or something like that. It's not like a huge knife, but it's a good knife. It's a perfect size. Dave is such an awesome guy. Dave is such an awesome guy. I love that guy. He, uh, on this model, check this out. You know what he did for us? And I even got him in here. I had this model, right? This is the DW1. I had this on Instagram, pictures of it. He's seen that my hardware was slightly off. So he's like, uh, he's like, I'm going to send you some new hardware. Send me two batches of hardware. Sends me all this brand new hardware for it. Um, without even asking if I could just get it out. Anyways, I got a bunch of new hardware. The the, the regular color, like because I that because the green was an extra order. The original stuff was just plain titanium. I can't get it out, but it's here in the pouch. But I got the regular titanium, so it's just like silver colored or gray. And then um, another set of the green, and then another set of the green. He's awesome, man. Yeah, he is. He's done even more than that. Yeah, he's done more than that. Um, That's like, just one thing. I ordered the MV2 for Jared for um, Christmas, and I accidentally ordered two. Somehow their website had a bit of a glitch, and it ordered me one from PayPal and one from my debit card. And then, um, so I got both of them, and they actually allowed me to send one back. 
before, like, or they returned the money before I could actually send it back. They just were like, hey, we know it's Christmas time, we'll give you the money back, send it when you can. And I was like, are you serious? I could have just kept both the knives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, of course. But you were obviously, I'm not he knew going we were going to do that. No company on earth does stuff like that. We had a good relationship with Dave. Dave's awesome. Everybody in the knife community is awesome for the most part, because <laughs> there are some some sensitive, some bad people some out sensitive there. Sensitive people. Well, no, like even like that one dude who took everybody's money for a Kickstarter. Oh, yeah. The dude was just talking about it earlier, Mike Emler. He posted a new thing now, making it seem like he's about to release them or whatever. There this was... has been going on for four years. For four years. I'm not going to talk about it too much because that's people's business that uh, that invested in it. But like $30,000 almost. Oh, my God. And he just took off with it. So There was a guy, too, who was doing that with Hanks, like never sending them. Have you been able to adjust your pivot on your real steel three? Which what's the three sixty? I have the carbon fiber in the S thirty five version, and my pivot is impossible to loosen up. Don't have it. Is that the um? Which one is that? The the. You're not talking about the Griffin. The control is that what you're talking about? You talking about this one right here? I've never had problems with the pivot. I think I tightened it one time, but I've never, to be honest, I never took this thing apart. I've never had to. It's smooth as it can be. I've worked with it, but I've always just kept it clean. Like, it looks brand, this thing's brand new with a, just a, a razor of an edge. I think I might give this to one of you guys because I've got a nice, nice edge on there. But uh, I don't know, is that the one you're talking about? Poltergeist design. Yeah, yeah, this one right here. Um, no, it's it's never loosened up or anything. I mean, why? You can't get yours off? I think I tightened it one time, and I just put a flathead right there, and I just spun it because it, I think it loosened up one time. But, yeah, it's just a, to me, it's just a flathead, but stupid smooth. But, no, I, I never took that one apart. I'm mo I usually take all my knives apart. Usually, not all of them, but a lot of knives I take apart. I never had to do that one. That one's still brand new. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it is a good-looking knife, and it's a hard-use knife, and since it is in such good condition, that's why I want to give it to one of you guys. Just can't unscrew the pivot for the life of me. Okay, so this is what you need to do. The bottom one unscrews fine. Okay, so this is what you need to do. There's a couple different tactics. One, I'm going to go down a list of tactics. One, get it open. Put pressure like this. So you're holding the handle, right? Put pressure on the blade like this. So you're basically putting pressure that way. Try that. Um, sometimes it'll just spin in there and that'll lock it in place. Try that first. Second thing, you can use a heat gun or um, like a, a wood burning gun, you know, something like that. Just some type of heat gun and put it on there. Next thing, which is probably the most important one that usually works, take your bit, make sure it's straight. Get a hammer, smack the back of your screwdriver. Because what it'll do is if there's Loctite in there, it'll just shatter it. And then you can you can open it up. Now, don't do the heat gun and then that. Try that first. If that doesn't work, you know, the hammer with the bit, try that first. If that doesn't work, then use the heat gun and also the pressure thing. Try all that. It'll work. I've never had one that wouldn't come out. I mean, I've had some that gave me shit and then it stripped out and then I had to do all kinds of other stuff. But when I've done that stuff, I've never had one that didn't come out that I did that stuff to. Um, what Jeremy said. So, okay. Um, yeah, soldering iron. Um, just got stationed at a new base, so I have virtually no tools, unfortunately. You don't have a, a flathead? I mean... Ask a buddy around. What, uh, let me ask you, what, uh, what station or what, where are you at? Simply Watching Blades. Watching Great Lakes. Yeah, don't say Great Lakes. <laughs> the Tucson 138 looks kind of kinky. Kara. Fancy Hello? pants. Yeah, I think he said Kara. Kinky Carrie. He didn't say Kara. He said Kara. He kinky did not Carrie. say Kara. Which one's the 138? Do I have that one? Mm -hmm. I don't think I do. Maybe I do. I don't know. Um, a piece of biker inner tube on one side will give you some grip. There you go. Um, okay, so let's get into this dangle knife talk. All right, frame lock versus liner lock. All right, what is a frame lock? What is a liner lock? We're going to show it right now. Okay, frame lock. 
Might as well just bust this knife right back out, and then we'll use, we got a lot of liners here. We got all kinds of knives. Okay, we'll just use this one. Okay, liner lock. Can I ask you a huge favor? When you're grabbing the knives out, can you not wiggle the table so much? Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> I okay, so I know everybody knows this answer, but I'm just going to say just in case we got anybody new. So, a liner lock is when the lock bar is on the inside of the scales. So, it literally is on the inside of here. A frame lock is when it is on the outside. Okay? So, when you unlock it, this is the lock bar. Pull it open. Everybody knows that. I know, but just in case. Now, what is? why is titanium better than steel? Do you guys know? Do you guys know why titanium is better than steel? Rust? And don't be fucking Googling shit and cheating. Is it like rust? Lavender pants and he likes to cheat. I'm just is joking. It, <laughs> is it like rust? Because Let rock? them answer. I'm asking. I don't know the answer either. Well, titanium doesn't rust, so that is one thing. Titanium doesn't oh, rust. Shit. Um, I know you guys know this. Why is why is titanium better than steel? Everybody's Googling it, so I might as well just tell you guys. They're not okay. Googling it. Um, RB6256 says lighter weight and corrosion resistance. Boom! You, you are right. And, okay, lighter, stronger, okay, so you, you guys are both right. So titanium is just as strong as steel, but it's way lighter. I think it's like three times lighter. I think it's three times lighter, but it's virtually just as strong. So pound for pound, it is stronger than steel, pound for pound. Next thing, yes, corrosion resistant. It doesn't corrode. It's it's um, virtually corrosion res um, proof. Next thing, which is the most important, okay, which a lot of people don't know, but titanium has a good memory. So, like, say if I, for the lock bars, right, say if I bend a lock bar, Steel, if I bend it back now, will will bend that way or just go up straight. Titanium, even if I bend it all the way back, will go right back. It has a good memory, and that's why it works so good on knives and for lock bars. The memory of it is, is insane. It likes to stay in the position that it was given or bent to. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Anal work, too. That's a good one, yeah. And you can anno it. It definitely does uh, some cool stuff because it has different, um, you know, chemicals in there or whatever. Uh, do you have any knives that will go through a helmet? I do have uh, knives that will go through a helmet. Um, depends on the helmet. What kind of helmet are we talking about? We talking about like a snowmobile helmet, a four-wheeler helmet, um, uh, a damn war helmet what kind of helmet are we talking about oh uh, my titanium scales on my bug are damn near lighter than the griffer scales i know i think they only go up like what was it 0.3 grams like i want the titanium ones we have the g10 and uh i really really want some titanium i almost ordered some the other day don't tell kara what but i didn't you just told um, me i'd like someone to do a deep polished blue steel knife handle like an old Colt revolver. Okay, I know what type. You're talking about blue, like a gun's blue. That's a different kind of blue. Like steel so, blue? So, well, gun blue. It's, um, well, like, okay, so when you do a gun, right, um, and just, I'm sure you know this, but other people might not. So, I've, um, I've done lots of modifications on guns and done all kinds of stuff with guns. So, when you re-blue a gun, right, you strip it first. You strip it off. You strip off the color, get it down to bare steel. And then the bluing, it's actually blue. But when you paint it on or when, you know, you put it on, dip it on, you can dip it, you can wipe it. There's lots of ways to put it on. But when you put it on, it turns like a, like a gray blue, almost like, a, um, like when you think of a blue pit bull or something like that or a blue horse, like that type of color where it's so blue it's gray. But then in certain lights it is blue. That blue is awesome. I've always wanted to see a car in that color, but um, but no, that does sound like a it's really. It's like a gun, I don't gun know, metal blue. I think is the. Official. I can't. Yeah, I can't think of if I've seen Anna work done that color. To be honest, I'm sure there has been, but I, Olamic probably has done it. I can't think of it though. All right, getting the Fair and Forge Falcon plane tie and the Buck Sprint Saturday. Traded a Benchmade Bug Out Carbon Fiber Elite, which needed new Omega Springs. I advise people to go to Etsy and get pairs of Omega Springs. They're $6 a pair. $6 a pair, and they're stronger than Benchmade's. 
Just buy like three pairs. You never have to worry about flicking your bug out again. You can just play with it all fucking day. And if it breaks, you pop a new set back in. I like that Asher, Asher in the box sent me a new set of Omegas just in case. And these are really strong Omegas, I will say. They um they feel like they're stronger than Benchmade's by far. Like, in sh I don't mean strength and they won't break. I mean strength as in, like, how strong they are to, to pull down the lock part. It is a lot stronger than Benchmade. It's kind of like Ganzo's, if you ever tried a Ganzo. Um, how much is the Asher? The Asher. What was the Asher? The one you just got. Oh, the what am I doing? <laughs> I was thinking of the name of life. This one was 80 bucks, and I got the other one that uh, the pivot, it's loose. This is the new one they sent me. They let me keep the old one, though. Clap to them. They, that was very awesome. Um, there's hot and cold style bluing. Yes. Um, she's drawing. I've broken the Etsy Springs as well. Have you? Well, you flick your knives a lot. You know what? I'll say this. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna grab um I don't Oh yes, I am a hundred percent listening. Okay, so let me show you something. I think some people's scales, and I think I had this problem, okay? I think some people scales the hole right here where you pull down the access lock. Where you pull down the access lock. I think some people's holes are a little too deep. So when they maneuver their access lock, it actually pulls down farther than it's supposed to. Try not to pull it all the way down to the bottom. Just do it as far really? as it takes to close the knife. Like, you should barely have to do it, and it should fall. Or, you know, if, if yours is tighter, give it a little swing. But don't pull it all the way down every time you unlock it. Try that, and it'll last a lot longer. I mean, far longer if you try that. Um, I flick surprising. at least 100 times a day. Me too. It's an addictive thing. It's a, how, how can you stop? I have many Benchmades, and I've carried and used them all. I've never broken any Omega Springs. Lucky you because yeah, we're unlucky with that. Like seriously, like it's <laughs> we ridiculous. We went through three bears and the bug out before I got. But the we didn't even ones. like. We're not like doing anything crazy though. No. I don't want anyone to think that because like we're really not. Like no. it, it literally. I put the Etsy ones through hell though. I flicked that knife for like three days straight, just sitting there, just bang bang. That's why I've been doing with this one, just flicking it like crazy. But I broke it in though, so that shows how much I've been flicking it. I broke it in, in two days. I only use in a month or two. I know I didn't might happen the same thing on my bug out. I mean, I don't like Benchmade Omega Springs. I, you flipped a hundred times in the live already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You, okay, you guys want to know something funny? So when we were first exactly. starting out, um, you know, usually when you first start out, you don't really get that many negative comments because people are usually trying to be encouraging when you're like new. But we got this one comment in a video, and the guy was like, stop flicking the knife so much, it's irritating. Do you remember yeah, that? Uh, I had one. And then somebody replied on it, and they were like, no, man, do you flick on. We <laughs> had a guy like, that uh, that came to watch one of our videos. I'm guessing he only watched one. And he's like, you two sound like a couple of kids fighting over a toy or something. He's like, oh, yeah. I, I, he's like, I won't never watch another episode, something like that. I'll never watch your channel again. And I'm thinking, like, and I even told him, like I said, um, like 80% of the time, it's just me. So you must have just watched one episode. And if you go to a channel and you decide that you don't like the channel off of watching one thing, especially for a knife channel, maybe with other stuff, yeah, because, you know, it might be, like, opinions on stuff that you don't like. But for a knife channel, come on, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Um, I never broke any on my... Uh, on this, on the Griptilian, but they're bigger and stronger Omega Springs, so I do like that. We gotta get back to this damn liner lock versus um, frame lock. Okay, what are the benefits to a frame lock? Titanium frame lock, because remember, it's better than steel. So, let's pull out some titanium frame locks. And I'll get some liners out here in just a second. Is there such a thing so, as a clip point tanto? Like that? Tanto. Probably, but <laughs> no, dude, that that's more of like a dagger. <laughs> okay, so let's get some titanium frame locks out. Okay, so titanium frame locks. We got a whole mess of these bastards here. So we got some really expensive ones behind us. I got dude's hinderer behind me. Titanium frame lock. What is the advantages to a titanium frame lock? Give me some answers. Stronger. I like it. 
36 watching. Holy cow. Woo! Um, what about a Bowie Tonto? There you go. A Bowie Tonto. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, you do. It's kind of like, uh... A Bowie Tonto? Uh, well, if you just did straight right I'm doing... There. Right now, I'm doing, like, a very severe clip point. I kind of want to do something exaggerated. So, we're just going to see how it turns out. I don't remember. Is the Ferrum Force Falcon a frame? Or I think the Falcon's a frame. I don't know. I got the mini archbishop here, but that's a liner. Okay, so 38 watching, 40 watching. Holy cow, stop doing that. It's making them That's pump. made for donations. Um, I'd probably go with the frame one. Why would they donate if they keep hearing it? Huh? Why would they ever donate when Do they're really hearing the bell? Do you really think people donate because just they to hear the damn just bell. To hear the bell? Just to hear the bell. None of that's bullshit. I'm calling Fair it right Falcon. now. Is a frame lock. Lindy Lou knew the answer. Bang. And, uh... Jeremy, uh, more reliable and access, no springs to fail. Ooh, but we're talking about versus a liner. Now, I'm going to say that the reason where one advantage is is that you make it stronger when you squeeze it. So when it's in hand, because you're putting the pressure on the lock bar, right, it's even stronger. A liner lock, you can't do that. When you have your hand around the liner lock, it's inside. So... Frame lock stronger. Um, so, yeah, it is stronger, but do you think it's stronger with no hand around it? What's okay? That's the advantage. Um, I'm gonna say also it's easier to take apart, right? Maintenance is probably easier, usually thicker lock bar. Yes, there you go. That's a good one, Lemon. Um, thicker lock bar. Um, what about insert inset liners? Um, well, we're going to get to liners in one second right now. We're only talking about frames. Whoa! Who told you they did to hear the bell ring? I you told what? you. Simply Blades. Thank you. You are not supposed to agree with him. Proving me right. No, that's What's not What's your okay. opinion on friction folders? I'm not a huge friction folder fan, to be honest. I got one or two, but I'm just not that big on them. But, but I still like them, though. Don't get me wrong. Slip joints and stuff, I do like them. Um, I have another, well, we do have a cool friction folder. We have a, uh, custom friction folder. Yes, um, so it's not that I don't like them. I just don't have a lot of them. I think it's just I like, like when we go to spend our money on, on a knife, it's usually not going to be that. Right. But we have been talking about getting some slippies. I don't know. I've stopped watching knife channels for a video though. It's usually not only the one frame locks are more rigid. They're thicker. They can have inserts for the lock face easier. True. They do have liner locks that have, um, for titanium liner locks. They do have some lock, um, lock bar inserts, but I don't know if it's always necessary. A steel lock bar isn't that bad if you do it with a good steel. I think that's the biggest problem with some liner locks is they don't use quality steel. Where's that fixed blade? What we'll fixed blade? The one Let's... you just had. I need to look at it. Um, I think every knife owner needs a... I don't even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Fiend! Whoa, 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 whoa. Coming for the bell. You guys are pissing me off, and I know you're doing it on purpose. Wait, Higgin, how do you pronounce that? Higgin, Hig, I got this. Hig, Hig, oh no, Kami. Higgin, Kami, Higgin, Kami, Higgin, Kami, Japanese nice snatch for Damn twelve. Kami. for twelve bucks. Um, what is blue steel three coating, or what is blue steel? Um. Um, well, I don't know what you're asking. This if you stuff put three coats, I know, but he's asking three coatings or more. Is that what you're asking? Um, you could coat, like, it just it depends, I think. Um, like me, it depends on how good you put the first layer on. I mean, I've, the first layer usually does good. I mean, you can do a couple layers. I haven't done it in a long time, so, um, but, uh, is that on Japanese knife for $12? Blue steel is Japanese steel. Oh, you're talking about, um, Japanese steel, like, just like a blue steel? I thought we were talking, oh, wait, I was thinking titanium just now. That was in my head. Sorry, guys, blue steel. Mm. Check this out, I got some blue titanium right there. Fuck yeah. Okay, so, what are the disadvantages of a frame lock? Disadvantages. I got a couple, um... What are the disadvantages of a frame lock? I mean, come on, guys. I know you guys can come up with a disadvantage. What is the bad... Like, if you can think of the one bad thing that a frame lock is or does, what is it? 
Pressure on the lock bar can hinder opening. Bang. There you go. Deadlock. So when you have a flipper with a uh, flipper in the back right here, if you put pressure on the lock bar, not on all, but on a lot of them, it stops it from opening. Whoa, I got to head out on four. Whoa. Thanks, bud. Simply Blades. Well, cool. come back and check us out if you get time, bud. I appreciate you stopping by. Very um, nice. Russell over travel. Good answer. So, yes. Yeah, so, if it doesn't have, they, they, you got to get all those extra parts, right? Because it has a chance of over travel. So, you need an over travel stop. Um, you need the, t the lock bar insert because um, otherwise you got to carbonize the lock face and do stuff like that so that it'll work. So, there's extra parts that got to be involved. You can over travel. Also, the clip. Right? If you have the thing, the cutout for the lock bar on the outside, it can mess with your pocket. That's why it's cool when they're done on the inside. I don't know if I have one here that's done on the inside. I'm sure I do somewhere, but... Oh, you know what? Right here. Medford. It's nice when they're done on the inside, like that, so you don't have to worry about hitting your pocket. Okay, so, here we go. Um... Pressure on the lock bar when deploying. Isn't blue steel a runway move? I don't know what that is. Um, almost always more expensive. Ooh, over travel. Jams at flipping. Excessive lock bar travel over time. Excessive lock bar travel. Yeah, it can over time. is If you don't have an over travel stop. Um, potential lock rock. I think liners could do that too, though. Um... Yeah. Okay, so what's the benefits? Ty gets cold in the winter. Ooh, there you go. That That's a good one. It gets colder in the winter for your hands. That That's a good one. Okay, so what are the benefits to liner locks? So one of them we just got right there. It's not cold in the winter, you know, so warm. Um... You're not putting pressure on the lock bar, I guess. Uh, what else? What all? What are some benefits to liner lock? So, like, when I do a knife talk, I write down all these questions, and then I sit there and talk about them with you guys while I'm recording. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that's what I do. <laughs> and um, I come up with all this stuff. Sometimes I already have the answers written down, so I don't sound like a fucking idiot trying to think. But, um, but this is what I do during the knife talk episodes. I come up with a thing I want to talk about. And I write it out, and then uh, we go over it. Um, like replaceable scales. Okay, there you go. Replaceable scales. Titanium won't get colder unless thermal mass. Changing scales and mods easier for liner locks. Yeah, yeah. And you, you can do more because titanium frame locks, what do you got? You can you can change the color because you can go like this and you can anno it. So How do we feel? I like that. What do you guys think? We're going... Clip, clip point buoy. Okay, I did clip point blade shape, but with ferrum forge handle. See the handle? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but um, thank you. Looks great. Yeah, I'm going to try to do some... Uh, somehow I'm going to try to do like a cool scale so that it's actually like textured. Because the other one was supposed to be my carta technically, so now... Now we're going to change it up a little Steel bit. Steel and aluminum will get colder before tie does. True. It does have um, better thermal um, whatever. Um, somebody said liner locks are generally more hand... Oh, spirited. What's up, spirit? Liner locks are generally more hand-filling or natural for proper ergos. That's true. You definitely... It's definitely more comfortable, right? Not all, because there are some really comfortable frame locks. Like this one, man. This thing's amazing. There are some really comfortable ones, but... In a roundabout way of speaking, a liner lock gives you, because you got micarta, you got carbon fiber, you got all these different materials, like this, some good old carbon fiber. I sharpened this thing for the video. Ooh, I put a nasty edge on it. I've had to sharpen this thing a lot. This thing's awesome. But, um, but yeah, um, so you do have, like, micarta, you got all these different materials, so, yeah. It's definitely more comfortable. Uh, I'd rather go to Neves and Blaze Shoe. Thank you, Lindy Lou. Woo! That's awesome. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> One Week Wednesday was just on. You guys should think about that for your future Wednesday. Wait, wait, wait. I read that again. 
Week one Wednesday was just on. You guys should think about that for your future Wednesday lives. I'm confused. What is week? Read this, baby. Tell me what this means. You. Week one Wednesday was just on. You guys should think about that for your future Wednesday lives. Well, I think week one Wednesday is like someone else's thing, and he's trying to say that, that we huh. should do something like it, but I don't know what it is, so it makes it hard to do. Oh, Lemon said, liner locks on FRN scales give you that sound that you can't get from a tie frame lock, but there are some frame locks that give you a good sound, too. They give you that that pop when it locks up. Here, let's, let me just get one. Hey. Right. Gives you that nice crack. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Right here. That nice crack. I love that sound. Here, let me get this one. I love that pop. But yeah, you're right. Like um, like this. Listen. But this isn't a liner lock. But it's I, I see what you mean, though. That's where you're going with it. Sometimes they're more quieter, though, because they're more compressed. If it's FRN, I see what you mean. If it's FRN, it's more echoey. Um, aluminum bare knuckle sound. Do I, I got the bare knuckle around here somewhere. We got all kinds of knives around here. Put this thing away. Do you need this out? No. Okay, this Lieb has a really cool Lieb. sound. It's the Lieb. We learned that Lieb it's means clicky. deer. It's clicky. Okay, so what are the disadvantages to liner locks? I'm going to say, I mean, we... Whoa, Damn. whoa, whoa. Where's that coffee at? Oh, no. Disadvantages. So, it it's not as strong. So, I mean, you could say that. We could go mm. back through that stuff. Not as strong. Um, what mm. else? You can't... It's um, so hot. Is it hot? Yeah. Douglas just moved? Don't no. Ah. Leap. All right, you have to keep your hands off the frame lock when opening a knife. Not all, but a lot of them you do. Uh, but what's the negatives to liners? What'd you do? What'd you do to him? You're showing him. Oh. <laughs> He's so cute. It's a beast. That's Magic my um, favorite Scout masterpiece. Is yeah, there's a lot of great sounding frame locks. I love the crack. Right, like when a frame lock, when the, the lock bar goes underneath the blade and it just cracks, and you know, like, that fucker's locked up tight. Like, you just, you just know it. Um, even this little Medford has a nice little crack to it. And it's little. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, frame locks definitely have that. But what are the disadvantages to liner locks? More screws, more hardware, more maintenance. Um, more parts. Um, they feel cheaper usually. Does two sun knives make any fixed blades two and a half to three inches? Yes, they do actually. They do. They even make chef knives. Lindy Lou's got one. Um, I haven't had any other fixed blades, but they do. Oh, you know what? I'm going to recommend one right now. Artisan has, um, one by Mike Emler. It's a little Warncliffe. It's a little tiny, um... Warren Cliff. It's badass. The, the, the prototypes are out right now, and you can buy one. They're going to be out just regular. The prototypes are the exact same as the production ones are going to be. So they're not making any changes. So if you want one, go get it now. They're like 50 bucks or something, but they're badass. And it's got the new powdered steel that Artisan made. Um, I've noticed more stick with liner locks. of tie. Yeah, if they're, if they're titanium liner locks. Um, I've noticed one thing is over travel, right? Not all. Don't get me wrong. Not all. Like a lot of my liner locks, I'm surprised how many times I've flicked them. Like this one. And the lock bar is in the exact same spot. Still just as strong as it was the first day. But some liner locks, like the Rat 1s, the Rat 2, um, and a lot of other liner locks, it seems like the lock bar moves over faster. Like they don't last as long. It's almost like they chisel out the tang of the blade faster. Um, we got a rat too. That thing's all the way over. I mean, I've had some frame locks that have done that, but not as often as liner locks. Haha, <laughs> Kara, come back to us. Um, a disadvantage for liner locks can be the access to lock bar. That is such a, you know what? That is so true because the majority of lock bars that I've had a problem with are liner locks because they fucking, it's like, 
they smash them in there and they don't they don't give you any place and they it's like they want you to like crush your finger in there to get to them what is the big deal i don't understand when you're making a knife you try it out right why wouldn't you want the access to the lock bar to be nice and easy um some liners are underbuilt or hard to access yep I agree. I suspect some of the problem with the rat is the lock bar takes a curve, making it shorter. Possibly. I never thought about what the problem was. I always, I heard somebody a while back, they said, because they had one, and they showed it, and the lock bar was like halfway, and they said, oh, all the rats are like that, right? All of them are like that. And they said they had like three or four, and they were all like that. I have three, a rat two, two rat ones, and they're all like that. Or they're, like, some of them are at 100% now, so... I feel like if you keep flicking a rat too, it's gonna fucking lock. It's gonna the lock bar's gonna move all the way over eventually. But they're still really strong knives. So for working and using, they're awesome. But for fidgeting, they're gonna it's gonna wear out. Um, Hawaii knife gear says usually fixes it with a Dremel. What do you do? What do you fix? What? How do you fix it with a Dremel? I mean, I could see if the the lock bar um. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you're talking about lock bar access. Yes. Yes. I, I do that too sometimes. That's, um, but you know what? You shouldn't have to like, especially if you're paying like a lot of money for a knife, you know, over 50 bucks in the, in all reality. I know we're all knife people here and $200 is reasonable probably for a knife, even 150, but for the fucking world, over $50 is expensive for a knife. You shouldn't yeah. have to put a Dremel to your knife. I... But I do that too. I see knives sometimes and I'm just like, fuck, put a Dremel to it. I'll cut in the lock bar access or, you know, whatever, the choil, whatever it is. Um, you deemed off the detent ball. Chamfer it. Yeah, that's true. It takes a Dremel to the corner. That's true. Yeah, you ain't going to be selling it after that unless if somebody wanted it like that. Okay. I need a coffee. Sorry. Okay. What do you think looks better? Liner lock or frame lock? What looks better? In my humble opinion, that's a tough one. Because I got some fucking liner locks that I think look real sexy and real good. Like like when they're with Micarta and stuff. Oh, I think it just looks amazing. And it's nice and comfortable in the hand. Smooth. Um, but... I think just raw titanium looks good too. And then you got things like where you can get inserts, you know, like carbon fiber inserts, nice and smooth, nice blue colors and stuff. Um, oh, that one's a tough one for me personally. What do you guys think? Frame for sure. You know, I think I might have to uh, join you on that one because you know what? Something we haven't talked about this entire fucking time because we're a bunch of momos. Um, what about fucking, uh, um, what's it called when you put, like, Micarta halfway up? Bolsters. What about bolsters? You can have a bolster frame lock. That's a frame lock. That's not a liner. There's no chance. I mean, if some people try to call it a liner... It's not a liner. That's a frame lock. A frame lock bolster. So if you really want the comfortable Micarta scales and a frame lock, you can get bolsters. Frame lock. Yeah, I'm going to agree with frame lock. I'm at a knees knife live, and we're talking knives. I must be in the wrong line. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it has a nice liner lock. There's a lot of great liner locks. I got a fucking ton of them right here. I love liner locks. I love frame locks. But, like, if I was going to say, this is going to be your last knife for the rest of your life, what are you picking? You picking a liner lock or a frame lock? Me, personally, I'd probably have to pick a frame lock or a bolster lock, like Hawaii just said. Because then you can get the comfort and the strength all in one. People tend to look at bolster locks, though. I don't know if you guys get this impression, but I get this impression that people look at bolster locks as kind of a gentleman's knife. I don't. I look at it as that's a strong knife with comfort. So that's a fucking good work knife. Um, I don't know why people tend to look at it. Maybe that's just my perception of people. But I've heard bolster locks be called a jet knife so many times when it's like, that's an eight and a half inch knife. 
You know, like, it fucking weighs seven ounces. What the fuck are we talking about? A gentleman's knife. Um, MPR. You like the MPR. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Bearings, flippers, washers, thumbs up. Okay, okay, yeah, there you go. What kind of fucking action would you get? Bearings, washers, thumb studs, or, uh, so bearings, bearing flipper, or washer thumb studs. Bearing flipper, or washer thumb studs. Ooh, that's a tough one, because I like them both. Why can't I just get them both? Why can't I just get them both? I want, I want thumb studs and a flipper, or, at the very least, a hole. How about that? A flipper and a hole. Go around that shit real quick. But then what do you pick? Uh, bearings or washers? I'll say, because I, I like me some washers. So I don't mind washers, but I also like me some damn bearings. You know, to be honest, I don't really care too much as long as it has good action. That's what I want to say. Because I like bearings. I love bearings. But uh, I also like washers. But one thing I don't like is if I get washers and the action sucks. Now... The majority of knives, after you flick them a thousand times like we do, they break in and they get even smoother than bearings. So, I'm going to go with washers. Ha! <laughs> Holes are for Swiss cheese. <laughs> Action bearings, but on one knife for life washers. That's a good answer. Good detent either way is what matters to me. That is so true. Because you can have... Um, you know, bearings or washers, but if you just got a, a, a fine-tuned detent, I like using that sentence, a fine-tuned detent, not too strong, it's not too light, it's fine-tuned, then you don't have to put too much pressure on the flipper tab. It's like, once you put the pressure that you need to flick it, it's almost like, when you feel, you think like this knife, you think you have to put a lot of pressure to flick this thing open, nope, you just barely touch that fucker and it opens up, which is a good thing. Like this one, you got to put a little bit more oomph to it because see how it's lazy. Now, if I want it to flip, I can make it flip. And that's bearings. Such a beautiful thing when it's smooth as butter and the detent is crisp as fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I that's so true. When you get that nice smoothness, the detent is just like so perfect, just crisp. I love it, love it, love it, love it. You know what? Even like these CGRBs, I know some people had problems, but these guys got some detents that uh nice and crispy. That Rhea, oh my God. Even this thing, I mean, just such a snappy detent. I like, I like a good detent. That's probably, that's one of the most important things because just like, hey, Lindy, you got this, uh, this one, right? Oh, that's so smooth. This fucking thing's insane. That's a good detent. That's one of the best detents I felt on a Tucson right there. How is yours? What, do you like it? Cool, I did a stop. I got tons of washer knives that are smooth as butter too. Check this shit out. I'll show you a hundred of them. I mean, I got ones that are just, they are so smooth. And this thing's lock solid, solid. My, uh, my griptilians are all the same way. My bug out's the same way. And they're all on washers. My, my shaman, I got lots of knives that are on washers that are smooth as butter. And they're locked up strong. Like bull, strong like bull. Jared needs a ZT-0200, meets all of his favorites. You might be right. Just might be right. Where the fuck is my... There it is. The 224 is your new favorite? Which one's the 224? I got the 226 and the 223. Which one's the 224? Is that a Jelly Jerry design? 224. Watch, I got it here or something. <laughs> I probably got it. <laughs> Teflon washers win for me. Teflon's cool too. Um, I like some phosphor bronze and Teflon, a little mix. Yeah, that's we, got, we have one like that. That's it's amazing. Fucking butter, butter. Like it's smooth on another level. And it, it, the ones we have have two phosphor bronze and one Teflon, 
and it just creates. The only thing I worry about is the Teflon washer. Like when I clean it or take it out, sometimes they're flimsy. I like to see nice thick Teflon yeah. washers, nice thick ones that are like a little more indestructible. But I just worry about them, like maybe like over you know so much time, are they gonna disintegrate or they? I've never seen it happen. Oh no, I have actually. I did see um some um that they it just fell apart. Yeah, see, they get mangled, especially if you tighten it too much. But I think that's what kind of saves it, though. Like, okay, so I did see one time with the um, the phosphor bronze and the Teflon. They kind of smashed the Teflon. It wasn't that big de big a deal, but it still, you know, it still happened. So, um, Also, ceramic bearings against thrust washers that are inserted to tie skills for silky service like Jonas and Glacius. What Barker does on theirs. Okay, so ceramic bearings against thrust washers. That's what Tucson has. Fucking spirit, man. I'm going to send you a Tucson. You're going to piss me off if you don't try some damn Tucsons out. Listen. <laughs> that was Tucson's thing. They're stealing it from Tucson. Tucson's biggest thing, they were doing ceramic bearings. Ceramic bearings. They have a racetrack, so they have a washer with a little racetrack. I've got pictures on videos and on Instagram. And then the bearings race around that track. They also put reverse detent tracks in because they put in all the bells and whistles. So you don't have to worry about it hitting the detent ball. You can just push right past it. Smooth as butter. I'm telling you, a lot of companies should do that. Um, and I know some do, but they got it from Tucson. And if they did it and I'm lying... Two Sun still does it. Um, I still stole the thunder. Yeah, lots of companies are stealing the thunder. Um, Two Sun has bearing, race, ceramic, detent bearings, as well as detent wrap. Yes, they have all the bells and whistles. And you know what's crazy is you'll see some companies that are three times the price, and they don't have one of those things. Not one. They have, they have ceramic bearings or maybe even steel bearings, but they they put it on the titanium. Or they, um, and then the detent ball, when you go to unlock it, it's in the wrong place. So when you go to unlock, instead of it being past the detent like that was, it literally, you're literally fumbling with it right there, trying to get it past. And then you got to push it. And when you go to push it, it's hard as hell. And it goes snap and it snaps shut. I mean, for you, there are some two sons that are, have a little bit of a late detent, but it doesn't matter when you have a detent ramp because you can just roll right past it. Um, okay, so what was the next thing? So we, we figured out frame locks look better. But then again, I mean, think about it. There are some beautiful looking liner locks because you can't get the the carbon fiber. I mean, you can, I guess, because you can do inlays. So we'll just stick with the, the frame lock. All right, here's, a, here's one. We already answered the, the frame lock stronger, right? What do you think lasts longer? I'm going to say the frame lock. I think that's pretty much answered. We don't need to answer that one. Okay. Um, why would you want a frame lock? And why would you want a liner? So why would you want a frame lock? I'm saying you want a frame lock. One, it's strong, like we said. Um, two, you might want it because you want that reinforced strength of your hand. Because remember, when your hand's around it, it's not. it can't really fail with your hand around it. Now, if... Whoa! What? One dollar and six cents. Hell yeah. Yes. Give it him cents. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, bud. Um, because they're better. <laughs> Good answer. Because they're better. Okay. <laughs> Enough said. Um, so why would you want a liner lock then? If there's fucking frame locks out there and they're so good, why would you want a fucking liner lock? I think because a lot of people have problems with the uh, the death lock. So, I guess that could be a reason. Beauty, because you can get the full liners with the, the carbon fiber or, you know, McCart on the outside. You can get the, you know, the beautiful textures and stuff. We got all kinds of liner locks here. I don't know why I didn't pull more out. Um, you can get scales that you can dye. So, there's lots of good reasons to have both. But, okay. Um... Okay, last question, and then we'll go to uh, 
some sh a, a quick showdown. Okay, a sh showdown. All right. What was the question? I don't even remember now. Oh yeah, which one do you think? All right. So, which one do you think has better or easier easier to maintain? So, for maintenance reasons, because like. A titanium frame, like, yeah, you can probably take it apart a little easier than a liner, but not always. Like, this one, what do you got? You have the pivot and two screws. Bang, you're in there. So, this one is just the same thing. Three screws. Bang, you're in there. It's the same thing with this titanium frame lock. Bang, three screws. So, uh, but you got the liners inside there so they can get dirty, you know, and you got to clean that off with the titanium frame lock. You can just fucking throw a rag in there and wipe it out, blow out your pivot. So, I mean, I guess a frame lock's easier. Bolster and liner, too. Two sun frame locks are so easy to take apart. That's true. They break down. You know why, though? They're so easy to take apart. The hardware's so good. They use T8s all the way around. And if you know anything about good hardware, we has good hardware. We company has good hardware. Um, React has good hardware, and Tucson has good hardware. A lot of other companies' hardware, they're shit. Not, not all. I mean, there are still a lot of other good companies with good hardware. But, like, this Ace Biblio, it's got pretty decent hardware, um, especially their T8s. But Tucson's are just so deep, and they're strong. They're not titanium, though. They are steel. Um, that was my one, my, one of my complaints about um, Tuya's. Titanium, because they use titanium hardware, which is awesome. And they'll send you more. If you ever strip one out or anything like that, they'll send you more. Whoa, Andrew Tool! Hey, buddy! Just because. Oh, it's Thanks, not because of the bell. I think it might be the bell. He just wanted to hear the bell ring. But um, that the, it was a little soft. They weren't like, I stripped a couple out. Or stripped one out. Uh, but then he sent me new ones and I didn't even ask, so it was awesome. I mean, I didn't strip it out to where I couldn't take it out, but... It started to get stripped out because titanium can strip out easily because even though it's stronger than steel, it's softer. So it's stronger, but it's not as hard. There's a difference between strength and hardness. I'm sure you guys know that though. Kubi seems to have nice hard. Yeah, you know what? To be honest, I got a couple here and um, they, like I'm most, like they're titanium. They use all T8s. Well, you know what the Nova didn't though. That was my one complaint about the Nova is they use T6s. I don't know why they would because most of their, their titanium knives, it's all T8s. But yes, you are 100% correct. They use very good hardware. I will give them the credit for that. They use very, very good hardware. I do like Kubi's hardware. Kubi makes quality good knives. I like Kubi. A lot of people don't know about Kubi too much. Um, I think they need to do, in my opinion, Jelly Jerry's got some designs coming out. And I do want to try some of Kubi's high-end knives. Like we ha We've had a few of their titanium frame locks. But they have another category of titanium frame locks that are like $250. Bucks. We've never tried one of those. We've tried their $150, $200 knives, but never that, that level of what they have. I want to know what the difference is. Um, I think Jelly Jerry has a knife coming out with them that I think is going to be like $250. Bucks. I don't think I'm going to get it, but I'd like to because I want to see what the difference is in their quality. Because they have really good knives. Uh, love when high-end production and custom makers use tie connectors hardware, especially those T15 pivots. Yes! Fuck. I, to be honest, if you gave me a knife this size with T15s all the way around, I'm giving them a clap. Because I love... Some people think I don't. I don't think there's many of us. I think pe I think companies think this. I think companies think that um, yeah, P they don't like to see hardware. So I'll use the little hardware so they can barely see it. So that most of it is orange, right? So you don't see the little silver nuts. Fuck that. I want to see the biggest hardware. I want. I want to see gigantic hardware because that tells me that it's going to be strong. It's going to last forever and it won't strip out. It says a lot of things. Those South Africans love their T6 hardware. Only bad thing about them. Yeah, they do. But you know what I noticed? I noticed some of them like the T5s too. But you know what I did notice about them though? Super deep. Like the, the, the South African knives that I took apart, super deep. Like they were tiny. I mean, 
like they're T fives, but they're actually pretty good. Like they weren't like some of the hardware I see that are T sixes from other companies. Like they were like a lot of times they're shallow. So as long as they're deep, they're not so bad. But that's what scares me is I, you know, if I see a T six, I don't want to find out that it's shallow. You know. JG Scout was all T6, and my Burger Lex is also T6 and T5. Yeah, they like those. But how are how is it, though? Like, it's T6 and T5, but how is the hardware? Because I think that's what's most important. People like to see the size because you're gonna, you got usually a better chance of it being better hardware or better quality. But I've seen some good quality T5s and T6s. It's just not that often, you know? But I have seen it, though. Kara, Lindy Lou, Kara, Kara. Do you guys want stickers or not? Kara. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the stickers, people. Thanks, Nate. Combine the small hardware with free spinning pivot. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. You know, I'm just use big hardware. It's that. It's that simple. And. I think if a company came out with legit, like a T15, which I know some do, like, you know, some of the Spider Co's and uh, that kind of stuff, but legit, a good quality knife, T15 pivot, T8s all the way around, or T10, fuck it, T10 all what? the way around. So say, so say this, T15, T10, T10, oh my God, I want it. I want it right now. Like, I don't think companies realize how much we put into uh, to good hardware, like how much um, how thought. Much you care. Yeah, how much we care. Hollywood ticked. Cool. He's ignoring you. What? I'm sorry, sorry. Jared, care to stop drawing and interact with us. It's more fun. She's funnier than you. See, come on. Damn. They fucking don't like me. They called you out for not yeah. being funny. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm not, done, though. I'm if it makes you happy. I'm not funny enough. I'm done. I wasn't even trying to be funny. Hey, I'm funny. Where I want to be f- It's my Carta! Now I can Turn make stickers. Turn it just a little bit, like this. Pretty cool. But, you know, the one thing we wanted to change, really- Yeah, I'm still gonna add that. Well, tell them about it, what you're gonna add. I'm gonna add a little Neebs Knives at the bottom with the Instagram and YouTube logo. That way, when we're sending out stickers, they actually mean something if someone sees them. Right, because if somebody sees it, they just see an N and a K, they're, they're like, gonna be like, what? Who the, what is, what that? is that? But if right. they see the YouTube and Instagram logo and the Neebs Knives right there, they're yeah, like, oh, know. Neebs Knives on YouTube. Exactly. By the way, anyone wanna buy a BBM? Ha ha. Pants is here. Hey, how long has this been going on? Fucking too long. Where have you been? Carlos. Everybody go check out Carlos EDC. Um, I like it. Um, yeah, Russ Kegel, he's funny. And he's he's here. You know, we, we almost named this Russ's Safe Space. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> we almost did. This is Russ's Safe Space. Hey, Lavender Pants, why don't you buy Spirited's... Uh, Carbon fiber Arius. Isn't that a, a killer, Jody Arius? No. Jody yes. Can't. Yes, so she carbon is. Carbon fiber Arius. She's a killer. No, we're talking about. I'm talking about Jody Arius, and she's a killer. She killed her boyfriend. She, like, freaked out, stalked him, killed him in the shower. A whole bunch of shit went the down. Arius is, like, the top tier knife of everybody's, like, list. Like, when you, when, when you ask, say, if you ask 10 knife lovers, what's the best knife out there right now? Six of them are going to say the, the areas. The Koenig areas. How Not about you buy a trade for my freaking BBM? Why don't you guys damn. just do a fucking swap for two weeks and then swap back for two weeks and then pick another knife and Shit. swap it out for two weeks? I just gave you guys a brilliant idea on how you guys can still have your knives, trade them out for two weeks, switch them back, trade another couple... I gave you guys a good fucking idea, and I bet you're going to do it now. All right, Bye. don't wiggle the table, and I'll be done faster. I can't wiggle the table, guys. All right, pick quick bits are amazing, by the way. Lindy and I have wee hobbits. Wee hobbits are, are, are probably the best. And the pick quicks do fit deeper into torxes than any other bit I've used. They are great at screw, getting screwed, and they normally won't come out. You know, I used, I'm not going to say cheap ones, because I used hardened steel bits before, but once I got the wee hobbits, I realized what everybody was talking about. The Weehaw bits are probably the, be the better ones I've tried, but 
one of them got rusty on me. I don't know why, but I cleaned it off and I put some oil on it and stuff, so it's fine now, but one did get rusty. 203, the Kubi 203, we gave one of those away, the Kubi 203. We've had a lot of Kubis. We've given uh, three of them away, I think, now. Whoa, Diaz, whoa, whoa, whoa let me in. in a row, $10. Damn, he's play. paying you to play. Pay to play. That sounds <laughs> creepy. Fuck yeah. I don't know yeah. what that means. Arius was my grail until I handled it, sold it within an hour. Damn, spirited, you got to come up with a new knife to do a trade. He don't like the damn Arius. Why, why didn't you like the Arius? What was wrong with it, Andrew? Because it's named after a fucking killer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just realized, but that was, um, that's not the person that's trading it, but I'm curious of what Andrew Tool's problem with the Arius was because I have, they, you're the only person I've heard. And I don't mean to put a knife to your nose. <laughs> you're the only person I've heard. You're the only person that I've said heard. anything bad. I haven't tried one, so I can't speak on it. I'm the last person you should take advice from mm -hmm. on the Koenig Arius. That's very true. But I, that's very true. Give me a drink. But I will say, though, most people will disagree with Andrew. Neves Knives, the famous rock club in Hollywood, like the whiskey go go, is now play to play. Pay to play. Oh, pay to play. You, <laughs> you pay, pay the club to play at the club and then sell your own tickets. That's a oh, good that's idea. that's crazy. We could go there and do like a, um, I don't even know. <laughs> Full honesty, my wife surprised me by paying off a large portion of my student loan debt. Whoa, as a surprise, she just did that for me. I can turn around and be like, hey, I need like a thousand more dollars, girl. Dang. It's for a night. Sugar mama. Well, that's awesome. Hey, it's yeah. you said it's your wife, right? It's your fucking wife. Sugar wife. That's really cool. Sugar huh? wife, sugar life. <laughs> but no, that's awesome. Good for you, man. That's really cool. That's super cool. I never had any student I bet your wife is so tired all the time. I know the job she has. She said definitely shit. a sugar mama. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff sugar mama. You'd be surprised. If you want, I'd send you one to try. If you like it, you can buy one, Russ. There you go. Lindy Lou's going to send. He'll, she'll send you one, I knew Russ. It. I Russ knew is she's a good exhausted dude. She's constantly. Oh, well. She's a, she's a store manager. She's a soldier. That's a hard job. People don't realize. But you know what, though? When you got yourself a soldier. Or a sugar wife. You hang on to that girl. Hang on to them damn soldier women. That's <laughs> what nice. The fuck are you talking That's about? a nice configuration, Spirited. I like my flipper version. It's my fifth one I've owned. Damn! You've had five? Are you talking about the Koenig Arius? Wait, I like my flipper version. Can we version. stop talking I about murders? By the way. What? Your nieces and nephews are obsessed with serial killers. I know, I've seen that. Isn't that funny how people do that and they get, like, obsessed You've with, You've been like, obsessed the... with them before, I'm sure. When? I don't know, but I'm sure. There you know a, a lot there, about them. There was a time where I liked, like, documentaries on That's that That's what I mean. Thing. Like, you bet, oh, a documentary of a killer? Let's watch it. Yeah. But, it, no, yeah, it's crazy. I got a full tie Arius. A while the action was really good. Like, really good. The excessive internal milling on the knife that large made feel cheap to me. I will try a mini time five more. So, it felt too light. You know what? I got that issue, too. I do not like a knife that's too light. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously, nobody wants a knife too heavy, either. But weight but I want feels a knife like... To, I want a knife to feel like a, a tool, you know? Weight, weight feels classy for some reason. It feels more expensive. <laughs> like, some, like I can hand somebody two different knives. One's heavier, one's lighter. And I say, which one's more expensive? The majority of the population would pick the heavier one. Not saying that that's a true oh, thing. I'm this just is, saying that this people is, would pick that. Guys, I'm shouting out Brianna Nelson because she's the girl I work with that has gone deep in the rabbit hole. Everyone drag her down further. I didn't know she was a Nelson. I know yeah, a lot of Nelsons. Nelson. I know a lot of she's Nelsons. She's a Nelson. No, she is. She she went deep in. She bought a Kubi. She bought a uh, uh, two Kaiser. She got the Lee. She's the reason I got the Lee. <laughs> The whole, uh, um, Hollywood Tactical gets into a lot of crazy shit like we do. Check this out. My friend dragged me into the Museum of Death here in Hollywood. I learned so much about serial killers. If you know me, you'd know I hate death. What? What's that? 
Ma- what? MacGyver stuff? Is that what that was supposed to be? MacGyver? Yeah, MacGyver shit. Yeah, I'm into MacGyver shit myself. Macabre. Uh, uh, reminds MacGyver? me of... <laughs> that's why I read MacGyver. Macabre. Reminds me of what you said about the Cox Workman. The milling made it feel hollow. Like, yeah, that, that was one of my... It, it did. It felt hollow. That was the one thing. I mean, it's a good knife. It's a great knife, but it does... It did feel a little light. Now, some knives... They're okay light. Like, it's... you got to hit that middle ground. You can't have them too light, and you don't want them too heavy. Like, there are some knives that it's like, man, I wish they would have milled something out, right? But then there's some that it's like, I feel like I could snap this thing. You want to feel strength, especially from titanium. And that's this right here. What? This knife right here has the perfect weight for something that's not metal. I like it. It's not too light, but feel it. But it's got it's got the steel liners. Yeah, this is a good it's weight. It's the for, perfect weight because it's not a big size. knife either. So well, I would consider it in my arsenal yeah. bigger. Okay, okay. But, oh, Brianna, I think ordered this one too. The Did penguin. She? She, well, she, she wants it. If she didn't order it, she's trying to because it was out of stock like everywhere, except for that one website. We didn't know if it was. No, shady. I've never heard of the word um, macabre. M- Macabre. I'm probably saying it completely wrong. Macabre. I'm saying it like I know what the hell it even means. I'm thinking of chicabre. I have heard that chicabre. word. Chicabre. It's like the new hinder scales that are milled versus the older scales. I don't know anything about the hinder scales. I got the one hinder back here, but I've only held three hinders now. So. Spirited, to answer your question, Jared. Four hinders. Told, right. Jared Three totally four. does that. What? That. Who else uses knives and fidgeting with them as a way to deal with their anxiety? Or ADHD. I don't have ADHD. You have, but like, I do got I do got some issues. You have, like... I got a temper problem. No, you don't. I do. Well. <laughs> who else uses knives? We should maybe get rid of all these knives, then, if it's if it's simmering. I, I'm <laughs> dealing with my temper problem, so I, I've actually gotten really good with my... I did used to have a temper problem. I don't anymore, and it's no. probably due to fidgeting knives... Because um, about four years ago, it's probably five due years to the ago, the fact that it would bring out my temper and I'd beat your ass. Jared has a temper problem. What? Yeah. Um. No. I'm. I'm cool now. I'm cool headed and calm. <laughs> you sound like someone who's not. I'm, I'm cool. controlled. I'm, I'm cool. controlled. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I try. I try to get a sense of humor with things, but I, I had a bad temper in the past. Um, what's that called? Anger management served me Ow. well. Yeah, uh, I had a dream last night that I had a temper problem and was beating people you up. You don't seem like an angry guy to me. I shouldn't because you see me on camera. You don't see all the murders I commit. No, <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. No, no, like I said, I'm 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 actually really <laughs> cool, calm, and collective now. I'm uh, I'm good under pressure, but um, I've been known yes. to uh, to lose my temper yes. in the past. <laughs> Got her. Um, Got him. No, I'm I'm actually I'm actually really uh cool and calm like when like when it comes time to lose my temper i just i usually stay controlled temper like where it's like um like say a fight right i i instead of losing my temper and getting mad and fighting angry i'll just be controlled fighting and it's a lot better that way because most people um do stupid shit when they're you know when they lose their temper um but yeah um, what's your thoughts on the Hogue XO5? I don't have any thoughts on the Hogue XO5 because I've never had it. I think it looks cool. Um, I like Hogue. Hogue's well, awesome. Know, Hogue's I, awesome. I, I like Hogue. I used to be a... Fr- Wait, Hogue, isn't that a gun brand? Yes. And well, I, no, they make grips, grips. Gun grips. Okay, because I always heard that Hogue. gun companies don't make good knives usually, but Hogue... Does. Hogue does. Hogue, Hogue makes because they make grips. But they, they don't make those gun companies, man. They get you when you're Smith and Wesson. When you're new into knives, let yeah. me tell you guys. Yeah, you think. When I saw <laughs> Smith and Wesson, I was like, hell yeah! I got me a yeah. Smith and Wesson. Yeah. I was over there, you know, all happy. Like, Smith and Wesson, yeah. Smith and Wesson make shit knives. It was but, my first. But but you know though that's not that's, my first first, but first for me. I'm you. trying to think of what other uh, gun companies are there that make knives. Um, oh, you know what? They're, but they're, um, I'll, these don't, they don't make knives, but they, um, they threw in some designs with, um, with Chris Reeves was, uh, Wilson Tactical, but that's for grips. Like, they, not to grips, but their, uh, their Wilson Tactical, um, design, that's basically all it was, so that's not really their knife, but I think Wilson Tactical has a knife, though. I'm not positive on that. Oh, I Maybe was, you guys know I was that. gonna say really quick, um, Brianna, if you're still in here, and actually... This is to everyone. We're doing a giveaway soon. Yeah. For the twenty-five, 
or not 25,000, for 25,000 subscribers. 2,500. All right, so make sure you guys pay attention and get in on it because it giveaways are always a really good way to obtain um, stuff, you know, that you've never tried or stuff for free, so. Seems logical, said Snap-on. Yeah, Snap-on does a shit yes. knife. Yes, oh my God, snap um, Just like even DeWalt, DeWalt made the most. Milwaukee's made shit. They all make shit knives. And you would think a tool company, it's Milwaukee. Snap-on has really good tools, Really too. good tools. Milwaukee has really good tools. How can't you make a good tool out of a knife? I don't get it. I, I can't fathom it, but. I, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. I've seen Colt still joins. No, okay, Doesn't so have... check this out. I did have a Colt knife, and it was an auto. It was a hidden button auto. This was back in the day. It was a good knife, though. I'm talking about, like, it was made of really high quality. Um, but it had a hidden button on it, and you didn't know it. It was a really good knife, but uh, I haven't seen too many Colt knives, but um, that was a good one. Doesn't Ruger make some knives, or no, am I, I making that so. up? I, I think they do. M&P, which Smith & Wesson. Oh, God. Well, yeah. Okay, something. but that one wasn't that bad. The materials weren't the best, but the action and stuff was fine. I bet CZ would make quality knives. Possibly. I mean, they make good guns, but, you know, I... You think that about a lot of guns? Yeah, companies. yeah, yeah. They they combined do? with CRKT before. Ruger? That's what I was thinking. Oh, okay, okay. Ruger Ruger by CRKT. Oh yeah, they're You're right. not I do, that good. I do remember that. They're not yeah, that good. I do remember that. Well, they mix the CRKT. Some CRKTs are okay. Yeah, some, I knew it. I fucking I think knew I saw it. Someone mention I knew it. Rules. See, there you go. I was correct. That. Bang. Fucking knew. Matco had a cool lock knife a long time ago. Matco. I have a Browning slip joint that's surprisingly okay-ish. Um, what else? That? Oh, I had, I had some Remington wait, knives wait, back wait, in the wait, day. Wait, 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 wait. We know your password now, Kara? How? Why? For why? Sig would make a great design but have QC issues. You're just going to ignore that someone much. knows my password? They don't know shit. For what? My Benchman password is for what? Benjamin is the Sig saga of the knife world. Do you know what my password is at work? Like, to get into my work stuff? Well, I wouldn't tell them. They can't get into it. It's I love you, Jared. And then oh, some numbers. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, bang. They make me change it so much, and I have to. It's so I'm like, I, every time I type it, I feel like a little girl. Like, I love you, Jared. And then it's some numbers after. Um, snap on I just. Oh, that. Finger. This password? I don't care if y'all know this password. Oh, you just typed it in there. It spells K Neve. <laughs> Come fuck with me. Come here and try to enter this password and see what the fuck happens. <laughs> Um, Chicago 23 says Benchmade made, bench made an H and K knife once with back lock and spider hole. I was gonna say I had a Remington um knife set, you know, like one of those Christmas knife sets, and it had like three <laughs> knives in it. Cheap as shit, but Hawaii knife and gear for the best comment of the day. M Tech is the high point of knives. Holy <laughs> shit, that's such a good one. <laughs> That is so true. I remember when I met oh, you. That is so true. When I met you and we were talking about guns, the first thing you told me was high pointer shit. And I was like, okay. What? Oh. Uh oh. We can switch to this. Yeah, we can switch to that. It's okay. You want to just close this down? Oh, let me pull this up first. We got a battery running low on the laptop. Yes, that's okay. We got a backup. Can't play special character on a number to have ever had this. So you can guess what? Has to have a capital, a special character and a number to... Oh, okay. I get you, yeah. Excuse me. Ah! Gotta have a word and then a number. Bang! I'll be right back, y'all. All right. All right, all right, all right. How long have we been going for? An hour. Wow, but you know what? The first 15 minutes is shit, and I had to delete it. So the first clip hey. of all this, deleted. Hey. Never going to be seen again. So everything we said hey. in the first clip, nobody will ever know. Hey. What? What? You know how you do that all right, all right, all right thing? Yeah. You know what that comes from? Yeah. What? That show or that movie. Days and Confused. Days and Confused, And I love yeah. that line. I got to say it. Go ahead. He goes, all right, all right, all right. That's what I love about them high school girls. I get older and they stay the same age. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes, I love the other yes, one they do. when he's like, you got a joint, man? And he's like, no. And he's like, you'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Just and, you, and then the, the, the last one that I love, somebody wrote it on, a, my brother wrote it on a birthday card for me when I turned 17. And it's a, uh, 
the older you get, the more rules they're going to try to get you to follow. You just got to keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a really good That's movie. such a good movie. You know, you guys, that I met the uh, guy uh, in that movie, Slater. He played Slater, the guy with the really long hair. I met him in Milwaukee in a mall. Really? Yeah. Um, man, we've had so much shit going on between Milwaukee and Chicago. and It's fucking pathetic. Yeah, McConaughey, he's a uh, Oh my god, I love actor. Clerks. Holy shit, I forgot about Clerks, that yeah, that's funny as and shit. And Clerks 2. Yeah. I love in Clerks 2 when they, he, he gets a hamburger from the restaurant and he has like, the guy like pees on the shit and puts a fly in his hamburger and the dude with the long hair eats it and then he's like, man, this tastes like pissing flies, yo. <laughs> 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 oh my god. What happened? Ah! Did Hello? my phone die? Hold on a second. Hello? Did my phone die? No, we're still going on this side. Are you sure? Okay, so we got a problem, guys. We cannot see anything right now. I can read from the camera, but... I can still see comments. We don't need to see. You can see comments? Yeah. Oh, okay, we're good. I, I asked them if they could see us. Alright, well, we're good. This is my battery, real quick. Well, that's weird, though. I don't like oh, that. I can't see my battery. Damn, we've been Here, going for an hour I got it back. I got it back. I got it back. 20 minutes. Alright, guys, we've been going for an hour and okay. 20 minutes. We're going to go for 10 more minutes. We're going to do what we want. Um, yeah, I love doing this. Where lives. can I find a girl that loves blades as much as I do? Hmm. That's a good question. Where do you find you know, people no, like that? No, you find I the girl. I can tell you. You find the girl with I the personality you. I can who tell you can suck in. Nope. Well, what? that's kind of what I was going to say, but no. Find the girl first, because a girl, once prison. you- He's Prison. He's a prison. Hey, that's not even all that wrong, to be honest with you. So, find the girl first, and then show her some knives, get her to carry one, and she'll never turn back. Because a girl uses a knife probably just as much as a guy, if not more. So, I mean, the it. way that I got a bunch of girls find into knives girl was the fact that we all use, like, have a use for them, like, at my job, so- it was really easy for me to get everyone to carry a knife because there was a need for it. Car firearms aren't bad for the price. No, they're not bad. I had one a long time ago. Um, it was it was pretty good. What the I, fuck I sold is a, a car? It's a, it's a, a gun. It's a gun. Oh. Uh, yeah, you gotta just. Uh, cars are very good. Price, no. I, what a professor. Good advice. Look at me. That's how Richie. Got me into it. I bet that's it's what you do. You just gotta put one in their hand. Let just get get them a knife, a decent knife. Tell them to care, or take them to a knife shop, or just go online and tell them to pick one. I'll say, hey, I, baby, I, you know, I think you should have a pocket knife. They're very useful. You can protect yourself. Why don't you pick one out? Get her well, to pick one out, and she'll like it because she'll look at the color. She'll look at this. Just make sure she gets a good one. Can I and, speak on it for a second since I'm a girl? Oh, is that okay? Nigga. I mean, I have a little experience in the field. The thing is... Ha! Andrew. No, um, you need one that's against them right. to keep you in line. Well, but see, I'm into knives, but I still keep Jared in line. Like, I don't forget about the fact that... <laughs> you want to go? Um, no, I'm just kidding. But no, I, I mean, like, we... Like, there's times where we'll be looking at knives, you know, and I level-headedly am like, no, we shouldn't spend money on this right now. Even though, you know, he really wants it. And... I mean, we still have a shit ton of knives, so it's not yeah. like it's not like it matters. But for the most part, it always matters. We also trust each other not to empty out the bank account on on dumb stuff. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, like yeah, can't do that. Plus, we always gotta save money for because we we we're always doing like um, post office stuff, having to mail stuff, and so we always gotta make sure we have money for for that insurance. Because there's times, man, I'll tell you what, fucking insurance and mailing knives. Holy shit, they can cost as much as a knife sometimes. I mean, especially when you got three or four people you got to mail to. So we can always make sure we have funds for that. But you know what? The which thing, is more important. The thing I was going to say about girls and knives, though, is um, if you can get them to understand the, the usefulness of it, for one, um, or, just, or just put it in their purse, right? Because... The thing is, is they'll carry that purse everywhere, right? You, you throw the knife in there and be like, I just want you to carry this. Well, then when something comes up and they remember like, oh, I have that knife, they'll start pulling it out. 
and and you start realizing the uses to the point where if you don't have it with you one day and something comes up you're kind of like damn it like and that's how i was at first and then phase two is realizing how cute some knives are and then you start wanting them because they're just like a really cute accessory with a very good use you know what i mean and then phase three would be the rabbit hole and it just becomes a whole thing a whole interest but um okay so i just want to go to what hollywood said about how re how reliable revolvers are and how you can shoot them you know they don't get jammed um you can shoot them under your sheets and then he said you can pair it with a lever action i like revolvers i've had a lot of revolvers um i tend to you know like um I don't know. I, I, I like them a lot, but I, I'm i not saying that like I've had them jam, but I've had it where the cylinder got clogged with the rounds. Like, um, I don't I was using the wrong ammunition or what, but like the after shooting them, the cylinder, I couldn't get to eject. And um, I've had that shit happen. But yeah, like, I think for, especially for like a female, if they're not really good with guns, give them a revolver because... You don't have no um, no safeties. You can just go off and shoot. And I don't know how much. We, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing we'll be okay talking about guns without being uh, demonetized. But see, it seems wish. logical. Um, take take your time. Just let us know when you're gonna send it. Okay. What are we talking about? The cookery for the gel that we're gonna do. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I I can't say that I. Why don't we just do it on a tree? Can we use it on other stuff besides the ballistics gel? Pepper spray, long distance. Yeah, I got some pepper spray that I'm sending to Lavender Pants right here. Some good quality shit. If you're going to get pepper spray, get fucking quality pepper spray. Get bear spray or get palm. Because I think it's like uh, 15 or 20% of the community isn't even affected by pepper spray. I love episodes of Cops where they spray the pepper spray and nothing oh, I happens. Got a story. I got a story. What? Okay, so one time I was on my balcony in the Hebrews. I don't know you guys don't know where that's at. Anyways, so I'm on the balcony. It's, sound, it's as bad as it sounds. There's this guy, right? So first off, we have a car down there, like down in the parking lot for sale. This this guy gets in it, and at first he's in there, and we're like, what the hell is he doing, right? Um, right before that, I forgot to say this, we got into like a little fight with him, right? And he's obviously off of his rocker, right? Completely off of his rocker. And so then he gets in this car and like, what is he doing? Then he gets out of the car, takes off all his clothes and then gets in the road and lays in the road. PCP? He's, he's saying, I'm God. I'm, I'm PCP. He's saying, then, then he starts saying, I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. He just That's keeps PCP saying, thing. I'm Jesus. That's all he keeps saying. And we're like, what is going on with this guy? Finally, the cops come. I ain't called damn cops, but the cops wind up coming. I ain't no snitch. So, um, the cops come, and now they're fighting a naked black man in the street that's uh, Jesus and soaking wet, and they Only can't Jesus. get control of him, Only right? Jesus can there's, say like, he's Jesus. there's like 10 cops, and they're trying to grab him, and he's sliming out. Then the cop pulls out mace, goes to mace the guy. The guy takes the mace like he's a fucking mace taking champion. I mean, just takes it, like, don't even care. He, he, he's it's like, too it's, revved up. It, yeah, too revved up. But the cops, they all get sprayed. <laughs> so now you got cops screaming, fighting each other because they sprayed each other. So now the one cop's mad at the other cop. He's grabbing him, fucking talking shit. They finally slam the guy, get him arrested. All right, get him arrested, get him out of there. Well, then we go down in the car because, you know, it's my dad's truck and he had it for sale. I go down there. We open it up. There's a phone in there. And the phone says, um, son of God <laughs> on the phone, son of God. So he we met Jesus that night. Um, Spirit of Blades, <laughs> the answer is yes. Right? Have you started your own professional sharpening service? Yes, I did. I am sharpening knives now. So I'm sharpening knives now for people that need knives sharpened. Um, I am doing a sharpening service. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it'll be a good way to get a little bit more money into the channel. Because we're trying to do everything to kind of make this a, a business. And, um... You know, I know it's going to be a while till it's profitable or anything like that, but you got to start somewhere. No business ever, you know, doesn't cost money at first. So I know for like the next year or two, we're going to pour a bunch of money into it, but it'd be nice in the next year or two for it to start becoming profitable. And I think sharp. Will you nice. do kitchen and pocket knives? I will do kitchen and pocket Says knives. Yes, yes. Me? I'll do fixed blades. Travis I'll do whatever. Nobody wants to fight a naked hey. man. No, nobody does. Not a wet naked man either.
Travis Luz says, I love you guys. We love you too, Travis Luz. Oh, we love you too, bud. Thank you. Um, But yes, Fiend, I will do anything. I got all kinds of weird, crazy stories like anything. that shit. Well, I mean, sharpening. Anything. Sharpening! Kitchen How do we find food. out more information on your sharpening service? So, you can email me or just DM me and we will talk on Instagram. Why do but I have basically, to... Hey! Why do I have to put up the flyers? Basically, for a regular knife, I'm doing it. It's a lot of work. For so, like, if it's a budget steel and a budget knife, I'll do it for like fifteen bucks because I know it's a budget recurves? knife and it's mostly a budget steel. I'll do recurves. Um, if it's h higher end steel, excuse me, um, then twenty. 20 to 25 bucks. If it's like a really thin blade, you know, I'll do it for 20. But, you know, if it's. It also depends on the finish you want. But I'm thinking 20 to 25 bucks, 15 bucks for budget knives. And I think it's a good place to start. Now, if, like, it winds up being something Maximate? that's really thick behind the edge and it's. I don't want to do any Maximate! Because I've never done it and I don't want to promise something I can't do. Axes? I think I could do I don't want to do X. Are you guys actually asking, asking these? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> if you really have an axe and you really need it sharpened, I would say get a file and use a file. If you really need one done, I can probably do them for you, but I'm going to charge a lot more, though, for katanas? an axe. Katanas? You should. Katanas? I will do a katana. I'll do a katana. Okay. You can do a katana. Okay. Yeah. Maximate though, I'm not sure Serrated? on Maximate. I, you know, I'll tell you what, I will do Maximate, but I'm going to charge more. Serrated? For sure. Serrations. I can do some serrations, but I can't promise you that it's... I've done a lot of serrations, so I'm not saying I can't do serrations, and I'm not trying to make it sound like I would you do bad done. serrations. I've done lots of serrations, but it's not going to be like a factory, like because I, I do it with a diamond um, a diamond rod. I'll do a kukri. I can do any blade shape. <laughs> um, Let's keep asking every blade shape. Yeah, I can do any blade <laughs> shape. Just send Jared something to review. He can't help himself. He <laughs> must sharpen. That is true, you guys. He Don't say that, Russ, you a, fuck. It's a loophole. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, I oh, actually uh, didn't... This is, this is Douglas. There's guys. a couple knives I didn't sharpen because I didn't want people to think that. <laughs> yeah, Nico, this is this is Douglas. You'll see him from time to time hanging out. He, he's an asshole, um, but we keep him around because, you know... He can be a good boy sometimes. Axes, usually you want to put, in my opinion, on a grinder or use files on. So you usually want to use files if you don't want to burn the edge. If you're not worried about it, then just put it on a grinder. That's, that's what chakram? I would say. Chakram? Chakram? Ch chakram? Chakram? Yeah, I'll do chakram. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> it is. <laughs> what do you charge for Sharpie? Anyway, so like like between $15 for budget, 20 to 25 for um. For a regular, and that's for just a nice working edge. I'll put it to now. If you want something like five thousand grit or something like that, I might throw like an extra five dollars on there or something. Do you uh, do? But, do you sharpen out chipped edges? Yes, yes, I will do a chipped edge. Do you do scythes? What's a scythe? Like the Grim Reaper. Thing? Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I'll do one yeah? of those. Yeah, but I'm going to put a working edge on there. I'm not going to put a polished edge on one. Well, uh, I'll, I'll if, give you a fucking hair whittling I, edge on it, though. Okay. As much as I can. All right, all right. I mean, because I can do, in all reality, I can put a hair whittling 600 grit edge on. So. Fucking bit me. And to me, I don't know about you guys, I like a nice polished edge, but it doesn't work as good as a, a 600 <laughs> to 2,000 grit edge. Can I say something? Yeah. I don't think I ever told you. Well, I think I told you this story, but I want to say it. There was a. Um, I'm not doing the throwing disc Xena used. No. What about Ninja Stars? <laughs> no. Oh no. Okay. I could. Can you sharpen a Chris? Yeah, I can do a Chris. I okay. can do a Chris. Okay. Um. Okay. So there was this guy. Listen. Yeah. You're not listening. I can. Yeah. I can fucking feel the. Non I'm listening. listening. I'm listening. Okay. Fucking Grim Reaper. <laughs> um. <laughs> um so there was this guy, there's, you know, everyone at work knows I'm like the knife person, right? And this guy, uh, I'm sorry, this kid, he was like 16, 17, one of the cart pushers, came up to me and was like, check this out. And he throws down on my uh, counter, he throws down a, um, just some bullshit, you know, with a button safety lock. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. it was like a back lock, but it had like a button you had to hold down to open it. Okay. And then you had to use the back lock to shut it. 
And I'm he, something cheap though. He goes, I, I kid you not, guys. He goes, this is uh safer than that assisted crap you have. And I said, I had the sheepdog with me at the time. Okay. And I was like, this isn't assisted or automatic. And he's like, it's not. I'm like, no. And I'm like, not at all. And, and it's I, a good detail. And I <laughs> and I like opened it, and he was like, oh, well, yeah, but this is safer. See this? It won't come out. I'm like. Mine's not going to come out either, dude. I'm like, that just makes it harder to open. But it was just funny, though, because he yeah, came He thought out, he knew something. He literally did this. Check this out. Check out my... You uh, want to see a real knife, bitch? <laughs> like, it literally was like... And I just looked at it, and I was like... I, I didn't want to make him feel bad. I was like, oh, that's cool. You Check know, out my Smith & Wesson I'm sitting there doing this M&P. to try to open it, like, pushing down the button, like, ugh, trying to open it and close it. So that's stupid. It's like, let's see who can get to a knife faster. Yeah, he's like, that's safer than that automatic shit you use. I'm like, what? Knife noobs, yeah. You gotta love them, though. You know, I ran into a girl in the street. Check this out. Um, street girl? The street girl. So, she, uh, I don't know how we started talking, but she was walking or whatever. She looked kind of homely. Anyway, so, she tells me, because, oh yeah, I was taking pictures of my knives outside. I was taking pictures of my knives, and she comes walking by, and she's like, oh, you like knives? She's like, me and my dad collect knives. I was like, oh, that's badass. Then she pulls out a fucking Smith & Wesson, like, assisted, like, mm-hmm. something. And, you know, I acted, to be honest, I acted like I was very impressed. Well, yeah. You know, you I, and, just... yes, I might have been pretending and throwing it on a little thick. But I liked the fact that she was still into knives. That's what I was impressed with. I was thinking, you know, like, that's cool. You like knives. Yeah, you, you know, everybody has a different budget. Right, so if their budget are ten dollar knives, that doesn't make their knives any worse or better. That's just you know what they can afford, and I was happy to see that. And um, I had two knives. I don't remember what they were or anything. And she checked them out. She thought they were cool. But you know, sometimes people don't realize, like even people like that um, hold cheap knives. You can put an expensive knife in their hand, and they can't feel or notice the difference because they don't understand. Yeah. Like the different processes and the reasons why it's better. And yeah, the you detents. never you never want a knife shame. Like it's hard to explain it's, somebody why a detent is better than a cyst. Well, you never want a knife shame. I never do that. Like I even remember there was this one girl who used to work for me and she wanted getting a knife like because of me, right? And it was some, you know, thing that had like a cross on it. It was red. It looked like a dagger, but it was only sharpened on one side. Yeah. You know, and I was looking at it and it was four forty. Um, okay. I think it was 440A. Okay. And, um, you know, I was just like, oh, yeah. She's like, is this a good brand? And, like, I didn't want to lie, but I didn't even know what the hell the brand was. It was, like, Fox, but it wasn't – I don't think it was the real Fox. Okay. And um, Like Chinese Fox? Yeah, I think it was, like, a weird – I got you. I don't know. But, I you know, you. I still just was like, yeah, that's awesome, blah, blah, blah. But the, the thing is, is I will – I will put you on your level, though, if you come up to me with a piece of shit and throw it down and then tell me that it's, like, better than whatever the fuck I have, right. like, you know what you're talking about. Right, like, right, right. In that situation, I shut him down. I didn't tell him his knife was shit. I just made sure he knew mine wasn't. Right. Like, that he was dead wrong. Um, Hollywood Tactical says, um, yep, I was talking to this one, uh, one girl who was a knife collector, but she was goth. And so all her knives were dark-sided uh, and blades. tech blades. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Um, he says, I don't know. I've had people hold my sabenza that were mealing person. Yeah, and that's I what I mean. Sometimes, that. sometimes, obviously, it's going to work. But I'm saying some people... Like, I've had people hold some knives that were immediately impressed, and they really liked it. I've had some people hold one. knives, and I tell them the price, and then they look at it and say, yeah. Why? All right, why? I have a fucking transmission in my car. It's, it's that's how you know, um, Brianna, the one that was in here, that's how you know she, she went down the rabbit hole quick because when I was talking about knives and saying, oh, it's like 50 bucks, she was like, oh, okay. That's how you know someone's Yeah, but deep. when you look at somebody and you're like, they're like, how much is that? And you're like, 500? There's like... <laughs> well, five hundred, yeah, but I'm just saying normal people would bucks. think fifty dollars was insane for yeah, a knife. Yeah, right, right. That's what I'm saying. So when you're like, how much is that? Two hundred twenty dollars. They're like, what does it do? It <laughs> cuts stuff. Why is it two hundred fifty dollars? It lays golden eggs. It's like, well, it's M three ninety, so the steel <laughs> is virtually indestructible. And you can get about <laughs> that judgmental why you when can, you tell someone the price of your knife. You can cut about three hundred and fifty ropes before it won't shave hair anymore. It's got a beautiful detent, great action, <laughs> you know, like stuff like that. They're just like, 
what? <laughs> Why don't you just have a fucking ten dollar assisted Kershaw, you dumbass? <laughs> That's like me explaining the value of my knife to my mom. She thought it was crazy. Yeah, mine too. The box cutter people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then they're like, I got a utility blade that I can borrow you. You, to don't, be need, honest, you don't need though, to spend two hundred fifty dollars okay, okay, on a knife. To be honest, though, um, one of my old bosses, I want you know, I try to get people knives and stuff like that and give them to them at work, and I gave her one of those um box cutters we had that x factor whatever the hell it was called because it was still a folding knife and it was just like a baby step you know what i mean and she really likes it like it is she's able to use it and stuff so i'm like ah, it is what it is you can kind of tell the people that aren't gonna take it to a certain extent but you can still get them carrying something yeah, for sure um okay Ashcan said it's also about why people like something like I said, I don't fight people. I don't go out in the woods to cut down trees. I don't cut up 600 boxes a day. So if it's cool looking, I'm in. And you know, a lot of times that is what sucks you in is the looks. If it doesn't look good to you, you know, everybody likes different looks. It's got to look good. And on that video that I just recently posted, that was the one thing I didn't really put was the looks. And I should have because looks are going to be a big thing. It trend. is about the now, looks to me. But when I'm like looking online at something, like, yes, the look will draw me in. But the thing that makes me buy it is because like I'm picturing how it feels. Like I want to touch it. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm picturing, like if I see something with like a thumb stud or something like that, like this, for instance, like I really like the way it looks. I like the micarta. I love the blade shape. But if I see something like this online, the thing that gets me to get it is like I'm picturing it in my hand and I want the action, how I think it's going to be. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Why spend that in something a cutter can do? Fidget back there. Different strokes for different folks. Damn right. Um, yes, ergonomics are my primary focus on buying knife. Ergonomics is definitely big because if it's not comfortable in your hand, you're not going to use and it. And I just always think about the blade shape and I think about, like, what I do at work and thinking, like, oh, that would be perfect. Fiend says, why? Because. <laughs> because. Because it's cool. Yes, yet Spider Co. sells so much, but most of their knives are but ugly. Just an opinion I personally love. Yeah, I had I like that opinion for yeah, a long time about Spider Co. I thought they were ugly as now shit. Now I kind of get it. I'll, I'll be honest, the first time when I saw one, I, I was they were like, so ugly. why would you want a hole in your blade? Like, does oh, that make it weak? It like, that's the, what I thought, though. I was, was like, the, that leaf it's blade already shit. halfway broken. Why the fuck would you want to do that? But then I realized. You know, later on. How I cool just they didn't were. like that, spike that spike. leaf shape, and I thought all their designs looked exactly the same to me. Um, but now, now I definitely get it for sure. What? What are you doing? He's chilling. <laughs> I'm holding. Anybody it. else got a dog that likes to get on your head? It happens. He's a good boy. I like personally. I like straight backs. The, the front end, I, I like a little finger spot because also that usually means I'm going to have good access to the lock bar. But I like a good straight back to go straight across my palm. Now, I don't mind if it does a little little swell, like yeah. um, like say this, how it kind of goes down, as long as I have a straight part right there. Yeah, but I agree. um but Or like this. So it's mostly straight, but it does taper down. I, I don't like mind this. that. Um, there's also knives like this that have the palm swell right here, where they're mostly straight, but they have just that little palm this, swell. That right knife there. is like really good ergonomics. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, a rounded. Um, depends. Like I have knives like this. I guess I would consider rounded a little bit. And oh, you yeah, mean sure. rounded this way? Yeah, like the like the Griptilian. Love it. Super yeah. comfortable. This one's super comfortable. Sometimes the comfortable ones look a little bit uglier. This thing is insanely comfortable. You don't even feel the clip. This thing is a beast. And this thing, I'll tell you what. If more people fucking reviewed, reviewed this knife and more people knew about this knife and not just Stasa23, me, and I think two other reviewers. I know about it. Million, like, not millions. Everybody would want one. Just like some of the Laconico knives, and like the, the um, was it, the Keen, stuff like that, where, like, it just, like, hit the scene and everybody got one. It would be like that. That's how remember, good that knife is. Do you this remember that is. comment we got on a super old video? What? And the guy said something, but the end of the comment was like, so I'll be somewhere else where you guys keep... Um, instead of watching you guys uh, wrist flick your knives, I think it was on that. Oh, yeah, he made it seem like we were going like this to get our knives out. I or think something. it was like, that what? um that ZT controversy video, and he was like really upset about. It. He's like, oh, oh yeah, some world you guys don't keep had, wrist flicking your knives. It had like, a very it really... light detail, and I said that in the video. I and said he, he was. 
Like we were not doing that. No, I went like this multiple times with the knife. I said one of the problems is is that it has an extremely light detent. I said so you kind of got to give it a little flick. So if you watch the damn video, you would have heard me wrist say flickers. that you have to wrist flick it, that, asshole. You guys, we're all fucking nerds, and I just thought that was the nerdiest thing that someone said. Fucking wrist flicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys why are beginners. Go, why don't you go get a Gerber, you wrist flicker? Right. Looks like you need an assisted knife with your wrist flicker. We should make a ass. video of all, um, like the best knife insults. 0562 tie for the win. I don't know about the 0562 tie, but I do want to know because I, I already do. You know, it's a badass knife, but I've never had one, and I'm unlucky. But I, I damn, know. two hours, you motherfuckers! Holy shit! Okay, guys, we love you guys. We're in Kansas Saturday. What are we doing? Okay, Saturday, we're gonna we're gonna try to do a knife pictionary. Okay, so what that's gonna mean is I'm gonna try to set up some sort of um. You know, big pad of paper or something that we can draw on. And what we're going to do is literally try to play Pictionary. So we'll start to draw, you know, designs. Pretty much popular ones so that it's possible for you guys to guess. Both of us are like decent drawers, but we're going to be doing it fast. So it's not going to be like freaking artistic, you know, things. It's going to be quick. Pictionary! Yeah. You guys have played Pictionary, So, you know, if, you know, and then whoever, we'll probably give something away. We're going to try to, like, find a way to keep track. So, like, if I... How are we going to give them our stuff away? No, give one thing away. Like, so... We're both be drilling different... We're no, going to do more than one knife. We're going to try to keep track of their scores so whoever answers first, like, point. All uh, the points. Okay, whatever. We're gonna do something we'll really try. cool. Or, or we'll just play the game and then we'll do the giveaway. Or like, we're gonna after. psych you out, make you think you're gonna win a knife and you ain't gonna win shit. Maybe so, we'll just do like a. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> just joking. I don't know, but we're gonna do Pictionary. It'll be fun. I, I think Hopefully, it'll you be guys fun. show up because I think it'll be fun. Um, and then you know we'll do that for like half of it, and then the other half we'll goof off and uh, talk crap and tell stories. Love you guys. Peace. Now, now the awkward. Get I hate up when you do this to me. You just leave the me camera. here. Everybody, everybody, give her a thumbs up. Bye bye. Stop it. I feel awkward.